How can DODIA teachers learn to recognize bullying behavior before it gets out of hand? We'll address this question and more with social and emotional awareness coach Trevor Romain in this edition of The Chat Room. Welcome to The Chat Room. I'm your host, Frank O'Gara. Recently, The Chat Room went on location to Peachtree City, Georgia, where I had the chance to sit down with Trevor Romain, author and illustrator of several self-help books for children. Trevor was training principals and counselors in issues related to bullying awareness and prevention. I asked Trevor about the problems students face within the school environment and what they can do to avoid unnecessary conflict with others. Welcome, Trevor, to the chat room, and we're really thrilled to have you here today. Oh, you know what? Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's, our, it's our pleasure, and the work that you've done with our teachers and our counselors and our principals uh, around the globe, okay, is um, absolutely outstanding, and it's been on a variety of topics. I know you specialize in grief counseling and in harassment, and what I'd like today is to just focus on one of the many topics that you've dealt with uh, recently with our counselors, and that's bullying, okay, uh, right. a huge issue today in, in American schools, and um, I'd like to just begin by talking about the characteristics of a bully. What, what is a bully? Well, you know, it's really interesting because bullying has been around for a very long time. What's been happening recently, obviously, is that we've been able to uh, be more open about it and share it more. And with the, uh, the way uh, violence has escalated, it's obviously there's more ways for people to, to bully, like cyberbullying, which uh, people don't realize is as harmful as somebody hitting somebody or somebody being mean to somebody. So what we've been doing is trying to you know, bring it all to the fore so we can, we can talk about it and share it. And so what would be some of the characteristics of a bully, though? You know, the interesting thing is that somebody rolling their eyes at somebody is bullying, leaving somebody out, uh, beating somebody up. And, and, and it's interesting because bullies come, and as I say this in my book, in all shapes and sizes. It's almost impossible to stereotype a bully because you could look at somebody who is totally innocent, but if they are frustrated, they are angry, they are hurting, uh, they can bully in a, a myriad of different ways. So it's not necessarily like, oh, look, there's this kid who's strong and hefty, must be a bully. And in fact, it's quite the opposite because a lot of those kids are self-conscious and are targets for bullying. Now, today, a lot of people will use the term uh, bullying to refer to a, a wide um, range of behaviors that some people feel are just kids being kids. I mean, is, um, is, is the kinds of behaviors that you just described, aren't they normal for kids? You know, that is the myth, but there is nothing normal about being hurt. The interesting thing is that when I speak to adults and I ask adults, how many of you can remember being bullied, messed with, left out, or, or, or hurt both emotionally or physically at school, I'd say 99% will remember if 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, one incident when, when, when that happened. So there's nothing normal about that. And you know we, we can't keep on making that normal because when we hear about children who commit suicide because of being bullied, that says to me that there is, this is not a normal part about growing up because we can't have those you know, acceptable losses. Well, let's talk a little bit about the victims. How do bully victims act? Well, the interesting thing is that the victims normally are kids who, at that particular time, are not, maybe not feeling good about themselves, maybe going through a problem at home, like a divorce, like grief. Um, a lot of the kids who are victims um, are, are smaller sometimes when it comes to, to physical uh, and vulnerable. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, in, in Africa, when a lion hunts a herd of impala or springbok or buck, they look for the one that's small and the one that might be slightly lame, and they will head them off from the pack and attack them. And that, that happens here too. But you know, there's some, some kids who, who might be just in the wrong place at the wrong time and become a victim. And then, of course, again, we love to talk about the bystander as well, who, um, if they are not assisting or helping, then they really are part of the, of, part of the, of the bullying. Of bullying too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what about the bully? What's going on behind <clears throat> the scenes with a person who would, would bully somebody it's else? It's very interesting. One of the things I say to children is, guys, most people who bully have got something going on. And research is showing that that is true. They are either having a problem at home, they're either having a problem with their own self-esteem, there's something that's making them feel inadequate, and what they need is a connection. They want to connect, uh, they need to express what's going on, and when they can find an outlet that responds, that's what they're gonna do. When a kid gets 
bullies another child and the child cries, there is a sense of satisfaction to the bully. So most of the time there's something, and I tell children always, you know what, we've got to really feel sorry for a bully. We've got to look at them and say, wow, imagine how hard it is to come to school every day and have to be mean to someone to make yourself feel better. And it's really interesting when the kids take a step back and look at it and say, wow, so it's not my fault. The problem really is with the bully. They've got, they've got something going on. And it's very interesting when you look at it from that point of view. Yes, most of the time. You look, every now and then you'll get somebody who's with a crowd of kids who's just being a fool and, and says something mean to someone because they, they're in that crowd situation and there's sort of there's this unity strength and uh, you know, now I can, I can be a big deal. But the majority of times uh, bullying is because there's something that's frustrating uh, or worrying the child who's who, the perpetrator. Sure. So in most cases, uh, both you have two parties that really need some kind of intervention in order to resolve this issue. Absolutely. Now, parents and teachers, um, oddly enough, um, seem to be, in many cases, the last person to know about this, about bullying when it happens to a, to a child in particular. Um, and very often it's parents who are very much in the know about what their kids are all about and teachers who are uh, very attuned to what's going on with kids. Why is it that uh, they're, they're, they're often the last to find out. There are a couple of things, and I'll, I'll talk about personal experience here. Daryl Lobel told me in first grade he was going to kill me. He said he was going to kill me. So I spent 12 years running away from Daryl. Interesting, I actually became an athlete, and I still run today. Uh, now I run away from my wife. But, <laughs> so, um, but uh, what happened was that he told me, when he bullied me, and he bullied me a lot, and that's why I wrote the book, Bullies Are a Pain in the Brain. Because Daryl, you know, was really uh, just a mean and horrible child to me. Um, he said to me he would kill my parents if I said anything. He would burn my house down. Now, of course, that's an extreme thing. And that just obviously was something that doesn't happen to every child. A couple of things. <clears throat> parents, uh, kids don't want to disappoint their parents by showing a weakness. Also, sometimes parents will say, I'm taking this into my own hands, and you'll get a dad who might go next door and, and take care of the dad of the son who's bullying him. So children are afraid that that's going to escalate. So they, want to, they try and keep it in control, and they reckon if they just hold on to it, they, it'll, it'll go away or disappear. So, you know, there's, we could probably talk about this for 20 minutes, but th that's, 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 there are a few of the things about why. And some parents can be really in tune with their kids. Um, I know especially in the military, um, I've spoken to many kids who've said, I don't want to talk to my mom or dad about it because they're worried about the, 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 um, the partner who is in um, overseas. Deployed. Or deployed, you know, the spouse deployed. And so I don't want to worry my mom or I don't want to worry my dad about what's going on because this is trivial. You know? And then other times I've, I've been in situations where I've heard um, educators um, say to the kid, listen, we're all in this together. Come on, you've got to suck it up. We, 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 you know? And it's like actually now discounting what is going on with that child, which we cannot do. We have to really, you know, uh, validate Absolutely. what the children are going through. Absolutely. So what, what are some of the appropriate responses then for parents and teachers when, um, when this comes to light, when they discover that there is a, a problem with a bully? The most important, I believe, is to be able to establish a communication line that is comfortable, that is safe, that kids can communicate with parents and with teachers, educators, counselors. I don't know how often I've heard parents tell me, I speak to my kid, yeah, we, we go to school in the car and um, you know, just before they get off they say, hi, how are you, how are you doing honey, how's your day? Are you dating anybody? Mom, I'm in second grade. <laughs> you know, it's like, what's going on? We have to really create that time and comfort. I'm a very lucky guy. My dad, when I was a little boy, um, Tuesday nights he'd take me out for coffee. I had hot chocolate, he had coffee. And honestly, this man would sit and he'd say, uh, uh, Trev, your mom and I um, have got some extra money this month. Should we use it for a vacation or should we put it toward a playroom? And I'm like, wow, this guy's asking me my advice. Or he'd say, mom, mom and I had a fight recently and I'm really sorry. Um, and he, he, he would say, I just wanted to make it right. Then he'd turn the tables and he'd say, so what's going on in your life? Oh my goodness, I would spill the beat. I would tell him everything. Because he, he, I, he trusted what I was saying and he put me in a position to be very comfortable to tell him what was going on. Because I knew he wouldn't just up there and then and go and try and fix the problem for me. See, so often what happens with parents is they try to fix the problem. We have to look at the problem, understand the problem, and work from the problem outwards instead of trying to fix the problem for our kids. We have to give them tools to actually be able to deal with what's going on. And that's what our program is all about and why I write all these books is um, 
You know, my dad very luckily gave me tools, like keeping a journal, uh, which, which helped me. And my dad used visual aids to help describe situations to me. In fact, I can, I can show you one now. Yeah, I'd, li aid. I'd love to so, talk about your techniques. Yeah. So what I do when I speak to kids at school is, how can we actually have something that they can take away with them visually to remember? Because what happens is kids hear words, and when they are tired or when they have heard too many words, it becomes wallpaper. You just hear blah, blah, blah. So for argument's sake, if, if you're saying to a kid, well done, good job, well done, and that's what we say to our children all the time, good job, well done, good job, well, it becomes wallpaper. The child doesn't even hear anymore what you're saying. We have to attach a value to that. In other words, oh, uh, Stevie, I saw when you fell down in soccer and you picked up that other guy, then that was really nice and respectful, even though he was in the other team. Good job. I appreciate that. Now we've attached a value to the action, and it makes the action worthwhile instead of just being words. Because when parents start talking, kids start turning off. It's just something that happens. So I use visual devices. One of them to describe how bullying works is I use a backpack. So what I'll do is I'll take a backpack, and I'll say, you know, here's a young boy. You are having a problem. You, there are 12 kids in your family. You are the youngest. Some of your brothers are involved in, in crazy stuff. Your mom and dad are having a tough time financially. The, the economy is making them upset and frustrated. They are just, their resources are drained emotionally and, 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 and physically. You're at the bottom end of the rung, and you're getting beaten up by your brothers. You're having a tough time. So really, you are angry. You are frustrated. You are hurting. So this is your anger. This is your frustra frustration. That is your pain. You are carrying that around with you. You come to school. I'm a new kid. It's my, my first day. I've just come from Guam. I'm now at Ramstein. And I, I've got butterflies and I'm standing there. I'm shy. I'm scared. I'm the first person you see. And, and you can tell from a mile away I am a, I'm, ready, I'm ready to take. So you come up and you're mean to me. You say, you should probably not even come to school today. No one's going to like you or you hit me, or you mess me, mess me around because you want to establish um, your uh, priority over there at the school, and, and, and I need to know who you are. And so what happens is, you are passing your problem on to me. By bullying me, you have let go. You have now uh, got it out of your system for a few minutes. Now I'm carrying your problem. I don't even know who you are. I'm walking around carrying your problem. It could be for a day. It could be for two weeks. It could be for 40 years. Because my wife is a psychotherapist, and she ca counsels people who are carrying problems, bullying problems, which can then translate into relationships, translate into work when you get older. What we have to do is this problem I'm carrying around, I have to get rid of because it's not even mine. So what I have to do is go to the counselor, go to the teacher, go to somebody I trust and say, ma'am, sir, I've got this problem. Can you help me with it? So then what happens is I will take the problem, and, uh, and I will give it to the counselor. The counselor now takes care of the problem. The counselor or teacher will then go to you and help you with the problem because they said, where did it come from? They'll go help you because there's something going on with you. So in the future, I won't be bullied. And then any future victim won't be bullied because the problem won't be there. So when you show that to children, they realize, OK, here is something palpable that I can actually look at and help to identify the problem. Now, that there's, there's an extra step there that I think sometimes uh, doesn't always happen with parents and teachers in that when they go when they discover the source of the problem the bully okay there's um, very frequently some consequences some punishment that happens but you're saying there's got also an extra step to get to the bottom of what what actually caused the bully sure, to uh, display the behavior that yeah it's all very well going up and reprimanding and punishing a, a, a bully um, disciplining a bully, we like to use the word discipline instead of punish because punish is out of frustration. Discipline is from the word disciple, which is to teach. So in other words, making, like in the olden days when the, the little uh, guy had to go and write on the hundred times on the board, I will not hit so-and-so. Yeah. You know, if we can actually take the one level down and try and understand the source of what's generating whatever's going on with the bully, I think that's really where we can, where we can peel back the layers. And, and what we have to do is also not um, dismiss how powerful it is for the victim. But if the victim understands where it's coming from, then they can say to themselves, okay, I I'm just happy to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. So it's not about me at all. It's really about somebody else. And that gives the victim a lot of power in terms of feeling better about navigating the situation or comfortable enough to be able to go to someone and say, you know what, there's a problem over there. So we think it's really important to be able to look at it from a whole bunch of points of view instead of just the traditional, okay, go take care of the bully, punish him. Now, if that ever happens again, son, 
or, 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 or young lady, yep. we're in trouble. And of course, again, the, the stereotyping of bullies, there is a lot of bullying, uh, bully, bullying happening with, with girls, uh, uh, a lot of bullying uh, w in, in terms of tattletailing. Mm -hmm. That reporting is also a hard thing to do because if somebody tattletales on somebody and it's not happening, that is a form of bullying. Surely. So what happens is that the, the teacher, the educator, have to, have to find a reporting system that, that, that works well for them where they can really use their intuitive understanding of the situation to say, okay, well, this is somebody who needs attention too. That's why they're tattletailing. Is it real? Isn't it real? And then get to the bottom. Now, you've managed to perfect, seemingly perfect, some techniques that actually get kids to open up and talk um, uh, where in some of the traditional ways they, they won't open up to a counselor or a parent. Um, w what's the secret to success in that? What tell you what I've done, and, and I've, I've been sharing this a lot with, with counselors too, is I tell a personal story. When I'm with kids, I, I, I tell them the story about a time when I was a young boy and I, was, I, was a, I put on my yellow shirt. I was going to the prom. It, I was 10th grade. It, I had my hair brill creamed back. Um, it was unfortunately in the very scary disco days, so we, there was that music to get involved with too. But so I had my yellow shirt on, my hair stick back, and I went to the, the prom. So of course I was with my best friends, and we're standing against the wall, uh, waiting. The girls were against the other wall. Nobody was dancing in the middle. There was a little clutter of people dancing in the middle. And um, my buddies, who were my best friends, who I hung out with since kindergarten, we played cards and hung out on, on Friday nights. But this was the prom. Then all of a sudden, um, this girl starts walking up towards me and it becomes slow motion. Her hair is flowing behind her and she's walking towards me and she goes like this. And my buddies turn around and they run. I mean, they are running. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> and she comes towards me and she goes, and I went, and I turn and look over my shoulder and there's a brick wall behind me. Anyway, she asked me to dance. Danced with her and I thought I was, now this was, this was my life. She invited me afterwards, she was a 12th grade girl, invited me afterwards to go to uh, have pizza with all the 12th grade kids. My buddies who I was playing cards, I said, what about cards? I said, cards are for babies. Forget about it. So I, I let my buddies go. I went uh, on my way to the pizza place with them. As we turned the corner, there were some 12th grade kids who were coming around the corner, football players, and they saw me, they surrounded me, the other kids left, and they pushed me around. They said, look at that embarrassing shirt you're wearing. They pulled the buttons off. Uh, one kid tripped me, I fell down, they kicked me, um, I cried my eyes out. And then clutching my shirt, trying to keep it closed, I went to the, um, to the place where the pizza place was. And they were all sitting around a picnic table and there was no place for me. So I was walking around trying to sit down. They'd invited me, I wanted to be with them. Um, but they wouldn't let me sit. Now I was, I was bad news. So I cried all the way back, went to my buddies in the basement and thank goodness they, uh, they, they, they came. They, they took they, you they, back. They took me back, we played cards. But I found out afterwards that the whole thing was a setup. They, uh, they set up to, to find a victim and I happened to be the guy because of, of my shirt. And it was devastating. So using a personal story like that, I tell those to kids, and there's, there's, there's empathy. And there's, there's sympathy for what I had. And then as soon as you tell that, then their stories come out. And they're like, oh, you know what, this person's real. So, they, so, so I allow them an opportunity to see that I'm a real person. See, when kids go into a classroom, the teacher or the counselor, the principal is already there. When they leave, they are still there. So they think that the teacher stays at school all their life. Right. But these are machines that teach me. The minute they can open up and show that they are human and they hurt too, that's one of the techniques I use to be able to, con to connect with kids. Well, Trevor, thank you. And I know that you've shared many of these techniques with our, with our counselors as you've traveled around the globe working these uh, particular issues with them. And, um, and I, I want to also thank you for the, for the expertise and the talent you shared with our military families all over the gro globe. You're a frequent uh, visitor with the USO, uh, and our kids get to interact with you. And um, a lot of the resources that you have uh, created also are available uh, through Military One Source. I think free to military families as well. So uh, we're, we're grateful to you for that. Thanks so much for spending time with us uh, today, and we look forward maybe to talking with you more in the future about some of the issues that you deal with. Great, thanks for having me. Our pleasure. You can find more about bullying on our website. Thank you for joining us in this edition of The Chat Room.